Yo. What's going on, brother? Ooh, uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure, my friend. Maybe one of us should start keeping a schedule because the hiccup of actually getting to this point was kind of amusing for a minute. <clears throat> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just caught uh, all the little nifty things I got to notice uh, when we couldn't quite time it right yesterday. Starting kind of with the, uh, well, maybe I didn't actually get that seed and as nailed as I thought I had it nailed. And then, well, maybe, the, and then just stop. How long? And uh, just chill and float again for a minute, man. He's, the, the one thing you know about 20 is if he's already said you got it, you got it. It's just a matter of getting your schedules together. No, I find when I accepted that I, my definition of win is probably pretty close to yours, which is radically different than most people's. I, I, I have so many fucking wins a day and they're not all good. <laughs> well, that's, I uh, stubbed my heel and I've had pain shoot up all the way up my hip. Like I got plantar fasciitis or something uh, this morning and I'm like, cool. When did I give cool. life back? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Now, now you we're can't talking. can't ask for anything more different than a random, huh, I'm not old enough to have that problem. What did I do again? Mm, what do I do now? You got it. It's cool when I got that, uh, when it fully hit me that you and I would talk this morning. Normally I'm at the pool right, right now. And it's like, Right, pull this afternoon, Jesse, this morning. It just all came together, and it's like, uh, so I send you the courtesy email to let you know. <laughs> and, and, of course, you're like, yep, that'll work. Cool. <laughs> and, and, and and here we are, you know, like, uh, and that included me getting, uh, I had a really cool win today. Uh, Max Schenk, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, Our Neville Minute, buddy. Our, yes. And so, in my so, notebook on Facebook. So Anastasia brought up an old post in the Law of Attraction by Neville Goddard Group about concordances. And Max shared, hey, this is what I have. I made a comment. And he also put up something about a, uh, it's a, it's like a topical exploration of the Bible kind of thing. And I looked at that and I thought, damn it, I had something like that before and I really loved it. And the problem in Australia is books are expensive. And ordering books from overseas, which is pretty much what you always have to do, is really expensive. And it's like, I, I'm not spending 50 to 80 bucks on a book that I know is going to be thick, right? And, right. So, and so I looked at his thing, and it's like, right. And I, and I, and I, I did the whole Western Gate thing. I, I felt holding a heavy book like the one that Max shared, but, like, but the one that I had many moons ago. And sure enough, I'm going to the shops this morning, and I pass a sign, book sale today at the social hall. And I go in, and I get four books, I think. Now I got three books. And uh, one of them was that. And it's just sitting there on the corner. And it's like, that's mine. Thank you. Three bucks, man. <laughs> yeah, and I've got it within 48 hours, I believe, of uh, noticing it, you know, putting it in consciousness, holding that sucker. And... Uh, they're nonstop, aren't they? They are. And they're, the, the thing where I'm at still is, and what I've been playing with a lot the last couple of days, is taking those instant automatic, you know, okay, cool, I've nailed that. It may not quite have been what I was intending, but it's that's it. And trying to separate it a little bit from the ignition. So, like, uh, when you first messaged me, I was about 45 minutes out on the interstate going, Okay, cool. And no sooner did I have that thought, did did uh, somebody call for me? I have a reason to come back to town. And as I was on my way back to town, you messaged me and boom, hey, can you do the call in about 90 minutes? Cool. I'm about 40 minutes from the house. That gives me time to get comfortable and Wi-Fi nice. set up and make sure everything's rolling. But on the Months. on the flip side, the the separating trying to separate it a little bit from ignition. I don't want to always be the source of everything I give myself. But I find myself a lot. I'll hit that ignition and I'll already be doing it before I've taken the time to notice what I'm doing. 
And I'm discovering as I play with that, that most of the time as, as solitary as I kind of keep my life, that is the natural bridge. So as much as I would love some stranger to walk up and hand me a book or something I'm not expecting, <laughs> the natural bridge is I'm going to walk out and find a way to buy the book. You know, it's, it's interesting that you put it that way. I, I, I notice percentages. And for me, uh, I, I'm a big believer. I, I've got an article up on Free Neville on this. I know you've read it or shared it. And thank you for all the shares, dude. I really, that means heaps to me. Uh, and it has to do with do something or do nothing or do nothing or do something. I've got both up there. Uh, but the, in the one version, it mentions all that you do and all that befalls you happens because of your imaginal act. And it's interesting to me with my personality, I imagine something and I go to a book sale. I can't help it. Uh, I, and not only do I go, they happen to have it. And not only do they happen to have it, I happen to have the time. But yeah, like nine times out of 10, uh, I'm the guy that I imagine it, then I find myself at a book sale. Uh, but on the other hand, so 90% so, so so of the time, I'm getting dirty and I don't mind it. I love it. Uh, I'm a dirty kind of guy. And like the dirty scotches, you know. And so, the uh, on the other hand, uh, Frank sends me a box of cigars and Victoria Carton of smokes, and he buries them in a box of books. And uh, and, and so he sends this. It, 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 I have no idea what he spent. He had to spend hundreds of dollars on shipping to get this box here. But he but he basically put a, a whole bunch of pseudo random books in a box with the smokes for us, right? And uh, Long story short, uh, one of the books that he sent, uh, I think it was, it was a Plato book that I wanted. Again, I'm just refusing to, I, I don't do libraries. I don't like ordering things, uh, even though I do. And one of the books that he sends is this little book by Plato. And I said, dude, you and I have some interesting reading things in common. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I says, oh, yeah, some of the books you sent are really right up my alley. He goes, I just grabbed them randomly. <laughs> so, you know, he went to some used book sale and just grabbed like 20 books and shoved them in a box totally randomly. And one of them, of course, is that book by Plato. And uh, there we go. That uh, kind of fits in perfectly with where I've been because I've been slowly replacing my wardrobe. So I have enough clothes to, whether if, uh, to pack if I want to pack when I travel or to, to have plenty wherever I land. And, uh, I go into the big man shop probably once a week at this point. And uh, I walk in and I can never find anything that's really what I'm looking for, but I'll talk to the little girl that works there for about five or 10 minutes and she'll start pulling shit out of the rack that I could have spent hours and never found. Yes. And it's like, there you that, go. that to me is a bigger win than if I struck the lottery or, or got one of these slot machines to play like I wanted them to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. God, it's fun, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not just fun. It gets to that point where it's like, I expect it. Like to this, at this point now, I know. Okay, cool. Not finding it on my own. Go say hi. Never know whether if it's just. And sometimes it's been a couple times. She was just having a rough day and just needed me to say hi. And as soon as we had our little conversation. I found exactly what I was looking for, like the dressing gown there. I get that you imagine being the blessing. Am I right? More often than not. Uh, there's yeah. uh, actually even a girl <laughs> that I met at, when I was at the hotel. Well, there's some days where it's like, you know what, fuck it, you all are going to bless me and, and fuck the hell with the rest of it. Yep. <laughs> But most, most of the time, and, and I'll go to the next story here, is one of the girls I met at the hotel that actually lives there and not just a, a front desk worker or any of that uh, has been having a lot of money trouble. And I haven't hit big at the boat, but I've been staying pretty regular. So I usually have between three and five grand on me. And so there's been a couple of times where she just hit a brick wall and she was just wanting somebody to talk to about it for a minute. And I'm like, well, cool, here. I have no idea whether if I'll ever see it again and she's, Oh, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. I don't care. The goal here is, is that we get you in a space where you can start doing the stuff I'm telling you to do. Totally. Instead of 
trying to fight a war just to get or keep a roof over your head. It's interesting. I, I'm not big on drugs, but I don't mind taking an Advil if my body really hurts. You know, <laughs> it's it, it's to me, it's the same thing because it's like it, no matter how you are drawn to be the blessing, it's like uh, whether it's give someone a hug or a grand or just imagine lovingly for them, you know, like you do what you do. And uh, will you see the money again? I guarantee it. <laughs> you know, you will. Maybe not through her. It don't matter. It's like oxygen. Well, it's part of where I'm coming up with the slot machine thing is, is I still have enough baggage around how hard it is to come by money. Yep. That I'm still playing with a lot of the little things that come up when I'm playing with the slot machines. So I've got to where I've gotten back to playing more with the penny slots instead of the dollar slots. Just because I'm wanting to spend the time playing with those instead of just going after that big win as soon as I walk in the door. I noticed in Forex when I was trading that uh, I like taking a lot of little trades. It's just, it was, it was like, I, that's, it's like, do I want to just swing the bat once or do I want to swing it a couple hundred times? I, I I wonder if that's also part of why uh, I enjoy this so much or I'm good at this so much because I really, I just like swinging the bat. Like how, how many, how many wishes can we put into the dream driven day today? Like God, there's hundreds. <laughs> just Well, I catch myself there too. In how much fucked up shit can I put in there and then find a way out of <laughs> And I don't mean that as in I'm intentionally trying to destroy what I'm working on as much as how many opportunities can I give myself to swing the bat, not just for something I want, but to prevent or to move back to a place where I know even in the shittiest of situations, I'm still fine. I like Tim Ferriss when he talked about, uh, when Tim talks about working, he, he basically trained himself to work in the most hostile situation. And that's why I always tell when people ask, like in this last week's, your questions answered live show, somebody asked about meditation music and I said, death metal. <laughs> it's like, I want you to be able to experience the silence like while listening to the news, while listening to death metal, while like to whatever, you know, because uh, if if you can, when you get that, you can do this, and you are doing this at any time. You know the music ain't going to matter. You know, like yeah, like it's it's all about making waves. It's you know, and, and if you can make waves, well, yeah, after you quote unquote have conjured up a storm, cool. It's so much more of an exploration versus okay, I'm going to make sure everything's calm and peaceful and lovely all the time. Uh, let's play. I think, and something that Andrew and I had discussed uh, a couple times, uh, was it's really easy to get that one thing you were really hoping for and fall back into crap and then either losing or giving away everything. And that truck I was talking about with Tim in the Dream Different Day group was, uh, that was exactly one of those things. I'd imagined up a vehicle with all the technological shit I wanted, but that was still old enough I could work on it if I wanted to. And two days later... I had decided I wanted something else and I hadn't really picked what I wanted. Just knew, I just knew I wanted something else and it started uh, choking itself out around 2,500 RPM. So I couldn't even hardly drive down the highway with it. It's like, yep, cool. You're going back to the dealer. I'm going to start back on whatever it is I really want here. Yeah. Nice. I think that's one of the awesome things about how fast this journey has been for me since I've started following you and Victoria it too is, is I went from hours and hours of preparation to do a recalibration of sulfur and salt and all of that for the alchemy shit and hours and hours of meditation from everything from a guided meditation from Wayne Dyer, like the, the gap meditation or, or that kind of stuff to trying to use the Neville's 
where he's explaining I, the I am and just getting back to the stillness as a form of a guided meditation. And then realizing that I don't need to sit here and listen to some idiot repeat something over and over and over again for me to get this. And sure as enough as I go, there has to be a faster way that I start stumbling across the Feel It Real Fun shows on YouTube. And then, of course, as I looked and you started joining us on Facebook and stuff like that, I started searching your name and, and, we, and I just kind of went from there and it all just kind of did exactly like you explained the sprawl to do, be it good sprawl, bad sprawl, it just like a snowball downhill. <laughs> and now, now I'm sitting down here going, cool. All of that was out of control because it led me exactly where I was trying to be. And automatically, I didn't have to play with Aka chords or do long meditations or, <laughs> yep. or do full moon or new moon rituals or any of that to get to everyone that I need out of my way because I valued their opinion more than my own growth is gone. That whole thing of like, it really is about your exploration and your stretching. And uh, I, 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 it fascinates me how many people just want to get somebody else's explanation or answer versus, you know, hey, Jesse, you know, you get to notice that you are the stillness. You're the soup that all the letters are in. Yeah, you don't got to find the space between the letters because you're the soup that all the letters are in. And then the whole thing of like, I mean, like I love taking a nap every day, but I haven't quote unquote had to meditate in two decades. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's like the silence is always there. I think, I don't know whether if it was, I'd already figured it out and didn't realize I had figured it out or if it was just hearing you say it made it click. But I caught myself a lot of times I would have the greatest successes when I went on a long drive with the stereo blasting as loud as the speakers would handle. <laughs> and then you came up with that, you know, I think it was about six months ago was the first time I heard you say, you know, meditate to loud music, do something in a loud, noisy environment where you can't control all the little things that are going to interrupt. It's like, that's it. The reason why I was having more success then was because I left myself without the ability to concentrate. I could get my head out of the way other than what it needed to be there for. Yep. Drive the car, listen to the tunes, do it. And then I started watching the ignition videos and then, aha, that makes sense. Because if I'm not battling my head, it has time to get all the way to belly or at least get to heart and bounce back and forth. And I can be psycho for a minute while I'm in the car. And nobody yes. else has to deal with the side effects of that sprawl but me and whatever deer I hit. You, uh... Do you ever stay still? It's funny. So it's funny. You know, it's, God damn, it's great. So I, I, I've got two computers in front of me, and one of them it just says Max Schenk just looked at some of my comments, right, about that book that I just told you about. And because, and here's why it's funny, because I was just going to say, when I met Max online, he was in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, but I always felt that he was up in Vermont. And he'd tell me like where he was, and I'd be telling him, dude, I don't fucking feel you there. I feel you uh, most of the time in Vermont and sometimes in France. It's just when I think of Max, that's where I go. And meanwhile, he was living in Carlisle at the time. And now uh, my question to you is, like normally I feel people in locations for some reason. Uh, so my question is, do you ever sit still? Because like to me, you're, it, it feels like you're the electron always in motion or having a potential to be anywhere. Uh, I kind of started that when I was a teenager, actually. It was no, nowhere feels like home home, but at the same time, the whole world feels like home. Yes. Yes. So while I don't have a place, I'm particularly uh, lend myself to root. I don't ever feel like I'm not home when I'm out wandering around. Yep. 
It's interesting. I, I grew up, where I grew up, I loved it. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful part of the world, southwestern Pennsylvania. But it never felt like that was, quote unquote, my permanent home, my home. It was, it was great to grow up there. It was great to have that as my hometown kind of thing. And, uh, and I was the hometown karate kid and all that crap. But meanwhile, uh, to me, the world has always felt like my home. The universe has always felt like my home. But, but I landed here. And, and then I came over. Victoria invited me over to the house. And we live in this little suburb called Eltham. And when I got here, I felt this is home. And it was the most fascinating feeling because I'd never found that before. And I didn't even really know that I didn't know that, if that makes sense. It's like not knowing that you don't know something, right? And, and it's interesting because Eltham means house of God or home of God. El is an El Shaddai, uh, Elohim. Uh, so El and then Tham meaning home. And, and I'm always curious about stuff because like to me, I always felt like I was the, the, the old uh, archetype that I identified with was the Apache scout. Like, yeah, in the tribe, but not of the tribe. In nature, could be anywhere kind of thing. You never knew where the scouts were, but they were always there. And then suddenly, uh, this home thing shows up. And uh, it's interesting. That's an interesting noise. Sorry, I was scratching my chin and caught the edge of my headset. Ah. Uh, Cool. It sounded like an alien spacecraft. <laughs> Wait till you hear the recording. Oh. Way cool. Uh, with that, too, though, I noticed... Uh, oh, where was I going with that? I had a full thought. Yep, yeah, fuck it. I notice when I'm talking to you more than ever, I shift states constantly. So that might have been important to the one I was in a minute ago, but it's not now. Sweet. Do you know that uh, location sorting is pretty high on your list? You know, we've got people, thing, activity, data, location. Location's pretty high on your list. I've begun to recognize that, but I still struggle to uh, completely understand all the sorting bits. Yeah. We did some calls on them somewhere, but yeah, that, that I'm sure that'll show up in conversation with what we got coming up. <laughs> sorting real quick is when I, if I say, Hey, Jesse, give me an update. You notice that I, that's a really vague question. Uh, my father, who's a location sorter, will tend to tell me, last Thursday I went to Carson's. I sat in the corner, and your friend from Connellsville was there. That's my dad. Uh, you talk to Victoria. I say, hey, hey, darling, give me an update. Oh, I was just outside cutting grass, and I saw Tony was over on the hill pruning everything, and there's this dog across there running. It's like, cool, activity is one of her biggies. Uh, me, I'll tend to talk a lot about people left to my own devices. Uh, people are the central part of my thing. You know, I went to the shops and I saw Kathy today and talked to Madrid. I got some chicken. They get the chicken from out in the country. Uh, he was telling me about this guy named Peter. You know, and, and like, you know, yeah, then I stopped and saw Dean. So you'll hear people in my stories constantly. Uh, data people. Uh, Data people are fun. You ask them what time it is, and they'll tell you how to build a watch, uh, or they'll talk about the history of time or something. It's really cool. And, now, see, uh, that, that kind of tells me which two I switch back and forth most between. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because that fits both for location and data, because I can tell you, you know, the color of bark on a pine tree in, in Colorado that I saw three weeks ago, Yep. but I couldn't tell you the name of anybody I met while I was on that journey. Cool. You'd remember them, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. But that's how I would remember them is, okay, cool. In what reference to, you know, said pine tree or said trail or, or the hot tubs or whatever there, yeah. Have you and Rob Begg had a conversation yet? Not one-on-one, -on -one, no. Oh, you guys got to have a one-on-one. -on -one. You, you, you two can tickle each other in ways that uh, that would be fun. 
Nice. Yeah, noticing how people sort their universes or where they put things. <laughs> uh, God, it's it's pretty damn useful. Um, it's what can draw a couple together. It can be what blows people apart. It, it uh, causes all sorts of potential for dance or war. And uh, just getting where, uh, for example, for location with you, if you were imagining doubling your income and working half the time, I would ask, where would you spend your, t your days at? <laughs> yeah, and you may say traveling, or you may say oh, I'd move to Omaha, but there would be what the, one of the keys for you to play with because you can use location as a great way of just marking out your successes. I think that's where I'm struggling with actually getting to your garden, is I can't quite seem to get the Western Gate open fully. I can get close enough to after I've listened to the podcast and and all that so much. I can get close enough to hear, as I kind of joked in one of the threads the other day, uh, or no, it was during the watch party for Wednesday or Thursday's video about the clink of Italian gold. And I'm like, yes. he doesn't even go to that pool anymore. But that's when it first, everything first started coming together was I could get that hearing down, but I still haven't found anything I can physically feel touching. I think for you probably, and, and this is going to be a cool way to look at the Western Gate because a lot of people don't realize this. If So here's here's Western Gate for me. Uh, you're someplace in the U.S., I remember. You, to me, you feel very far up and to the right. Uh, I'm thinking you might be Midwest or the middle of the country, if I remember correctly. When I was in Pennsylvania, you would have felt over to the left and down a little bit maybe. When I was in Florida, you'd feel over to the left and up. But right now you feel to the right of me, far, far away. Uh, and that is another way of Western gating. Cause it's just like, where do I feel Jesse is? Uh, he's, he's to me, you're far up to the right. Uh, now if I feel Jesse in the garden, I'm probably just going to give you a hug, man. <laughs> just bang. Just, yeah. Fuck. You're a big guy. You're like Grant. Grant's bigger than I thought. When you got here, it's like, ooh, it'd be hard to squeeze you in the bimmer. <laughs> yeah, but that's the great thing about any of us big guys that understand motion, even just on a solely with the body level. You're, you're not going to fit that. Well, damn, you do. <laughs> I caught that a lot. Uh, last year, about this time, I was throwing the rideshare scooters. We were pulling them into the warehouse to charge them and, and check them out overnight and then putting them back out in the morning. Uh, and I could move, and, and, and my partner at the time, he's now my the drinking buddy I talk about that I drink bourbon and scotch and, and wine taste oh, nice. and shit with. Uh, you don't, he, his constant always was, you don't move like a guy your size. Yes. Like, well, how's a guy my size supposed to move? He goes, well, you're in your 30s, so you should move about like you're 50. Uh, since I've been working with your products and talking to you back and forth more, I'm going, I know a 50-year-old that can move like I've never dreamed of moving. Yes. It's funny to me, you feel like you're 18. I've noticed the more I play and the more I get better with the being curious enough that social interaction doesn't bother me, I, yeah, 18 is about the best to put it. I actually could almost put it more like 12. I have the energy and the tenacity to climb a tree. I just don't really have a desire to. Yes. Nice. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder if that's why I pegged you at 18 to me, because at 12, I would have climbed the tree. At 18, yeah, I, I could, but I didn't have an interest in it. Um. When I was 18, I think that's where the difference in us is, is. I was never much to be one off the ground because until I understood how much of me was actually me here recently, I had this thing about falling. I can trip over flat ground. It's funny because I, the, uh, 
the ex I was trying to manifest back when I first started following you and I was so hung up on that we had those yep. couple conversations about she used to hate when we would go hiking because I could wear a pair of flip flops and walk on what appeared to almost be a flat rock face. <laughs> But then in the parking lot on the way back, I would trip over the tip edge of my flip flop because it would roll underneath the edge of my foot. And so I would come back and look like I fell down the cliff face. And all in reality, all I did was skid across the parking lot because I was trying to keep up with her boys. Yeah, nice. And as I've gotten, though, I've noticed. Uh, like today, especially with that little bit of sore from catching my heel. And I figured out what I did was I actually hit my heel on the end of the sleigh while I was flop tossing and turning while I was sleeping. And uh, so to, to move around today, it's been a little bit more of a, okay, cool. I'm going to have to nail either the revision or I'm going to have to stay in the active state akin to sleep that I've been playing with, with the slot machines in order to not focus on that point of pain. So that way I can still move and I can get it all worked out and it not be stiff, but at the same time, I'm still nailing all the stuff I'm seeing myself doing. Yes. <clears throat> and that's where I, I kind of want, I caught one in the law of attraction group. I might've been a little rougher with than I intended to but she kept repeating the same thing. And then like two hours later, she posted some shit about feeling fake when she tried to feel it real for her boyfriend. And I'm going there. That's the point you want to focus on. And I, I we had a little bit of war and a nice little bit of dance. And I think what we really both came around with was, is I wasn't willing to surrender to a point she could understand from. And she wasn't willing to surrender to a point where she understood what I was trying to say. Yeah, I always imagine them having had gotten it. Uh, yeah, even, uh, God, I've had more than one that are just stubborn buggers. It's like, all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll connect up on the other side of the, the bit here, I'm sure. Sometimes I get to be the grit. Sometimes I'm the gas. Sometimes I'm the grit. You know, the cre yeah, that helps with the uh, friction. Well, what it really reminds me of is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm not by nature. I've always been sneakily stubborn. Like, I don't always realize how stubborn I'm really being. And on the flip side, where I would used to go manipulative, now I know I can go, okay, cool. I just need to sit down and chill for a minute and float. But I used to be able to worm my way into someone's head just enough <laughs> for them to figure out what I was trying to do. So then from that point, they could decide whether that was really what we were going to do or not. Nice. And to, to learn now that that whole time, really what all I was doing was is I had nailed us doing what it was I wanted to do well enough that there was no way I was going to lose that argument. But I still... Still wasn't conscious enough to know I was making it a war when I could have just yes. left it alone yes. and done it. God, we are so trained to be at war. We do, we trained ourselves so well, and and dance and game are just they're always there. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, I guess I should explain <laughs> that for everyone who's not on the call at the moment, because I know you get it. But uh, for a moment, I just realized is the, the girl I was talking about earlier from the hotel is definitely a data sort. She's constantly looking for bits, little bits of information back and forth to either confirm what she already believes is true or to try to convince herself it's not true. So where I'm going wrong with explaining things to her is I'm trying to tell her about all this wonderful ethereal shit that makes all that data useless. 
instead of trying to figure out how to point her to the right data for her to come to that conclusion on her own. Yes. I, you know about my love affair with Neil Gaiman. I, I, we take a bubble bath at least two, three times a week together, and I enjoy his master class. And one of the things that he brings up is you give them enough detail that they fill in all the gaps. So, you, so you, yeah, if you give them too much, there's no room for them to imagine up anything. And, 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 and I love the way you just described data sorting because data sorting tends to go, this will confirm what I already believe to be true or it will negate what I already believe to be true. It's, a, it's almost a war versus what you, what you can be doing with her. And it sounds like this is part of your discovery. You can give her data that invites her to stretch. That's that. That was the O. Yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah. I when you when you went into the O, you stretched. Oh, that's a stretch. So 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 now you get to invite her to stretch. Fuck, man. Talk about fun. Mm. To, to, to me, that's a major piece of meat for our play. And God, I wonder who else it'll give to. That, that was the immediate, you know, even though I waffled a second on whether or not to go ahead and make it public, that immediate decisiveness when I did make up my mind was right there because I'm going to stumble across something I don't realize yet, be it because of the call or because of the states I'm stretching to in the process, uh, that'll give heaps just to someone who's just sitting there going, man, I don't know. Yep. And then I think about all the gold I nailed from the call with Rob and I'm going, yeah, no, I got to. I don't have a choice. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, I didn't even ask that at the beginning, so I'm glad you said it. So, uh, yeah, we'll make it official. So you're cool if we make the call public and everybody in the world can listen to it. Yes. Uh, cool. Done. I find, you know, it's interesting that... Uh, there's all, there's that defensiveness of I want to keep it private, which which you know is common, versus this right yeah I if I live my life as if I'm naked all the time, uh, then I don't have to worry about what do they find out about me because I just put it all out there you know, and uh, and in doing that it's like fuck I I can feel the knees and the breeze a lot more. There's so much more that I get to touch and so many more ways I get to be touched. Yeah, just by, uh, right, you know, uh, I'm like you, we're naked under our clothes. Let's put it out there. Well, and that's where I've discovered, I always, from the time I was a teenager, I hate clothes. <laughs> and I thought, okay, cool, one day I'm going to make enough money that I can live in a naturalist resort all the time. Nice. Never have to touch another piece of clothing except for to go shopping or, or go to the bar again. And then I realized, I really don't go to the bar shopping that much, so let's just go. And as I've been playing with the rejecting rejection and the yes. touch, I'm starting to notice that I have that same feeling of freedom that attracted me to not wanting to wear clothes yes. without having to walk around in a place that would get me in trouble yes. in the world of Caesar that way. Yes. I love how Neville mentions about when you first try on a state, it's like putting on a new suit and then you get to uh, let the suit become yours and it just changes everything. But if we unframe that, it's like what you really are is naked, right? And, and just getting and really exploring that, like it, in any moment I can go from being loving teacher to, which is an outfit, to loving husband, which is another outfit to being naked, to being loving puppy dad, because I'm getting Bruce driving me crazy right now. Hi, buddy. I know. I know. I'm on the phone, and you love to get low while I'm on the phone. <laughs> I beat that dog. I find a lot of people who are on this kind of path have dreams or, or experiences of nakedness or dreams where they go to work without their pants on. That was a big one of mine. Anytime I began to expose myself more, quote unquote, in my work, 
I would start having dreams of going to like the nursing home and discovering that I didn't have pants on. <laughs> so it's like, what a hoot, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The metaphors we give ourselves. I honestly don't remember that, but I have a feeling that I have been there. Like it sounds a familiar, but I think that was be long before I got, I understood scientifically that things were not, what we were describing them scientifically. And I've understood that for decades. Yes. But to actually have an, a real, a true understanding of everything that I know, see and touch is there because I wanted to know it, see it and touch it. Whether if I'm in a completely shit state and my life is all falling apart and I have no idea what, which end is up or on the flip side, even when, everything is rolling exactly the way I want it to roll. Hmm. Seems like we suspect the truth before we notice it. Well, and that's where I got into, I started getting into law of attraction and witchcraft probably 10 years ago the first time. Sure. And uh, I understood the basic principles of, you know, the, concept of, of Gaia as Mother Earth as, as the one spirit within everything and also on the flip side, everything I touch is just, as for lack of a better phrase, vibrating at a specific frequency so it made sense to make that next leap into the law of attraction and vibration stuff. Yep. And then now here 10 years later I get it doesn't really matter whether it's vibrating at a specific frequency or not I get to touch it, play with it, and kick it, and figure out which parts of me break when I smack it too hard. And... and then stop and sit back and, and just enjoy the fact that it's there. Hmm. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Is that a doorbell or, or something that just sounds like one? I'm not sure with the headphones in. I can't tell whether that was on my side or yours. Wasn't here. <laughs> that was great. Came from somewhere. That was nice. Then that must have been on my side, but that means they're all the way through the house and I'm not walking that far to check the door. That was on my side for sure. <laughs> Oh, of course, I get my wallet hung up in the chair and everything, right? Okay, so pardon me real quick. You may have to edit this bit out. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, they're going again. So I figured out the other slidey thing, as you just noticed there. I did open and close the sliding door that day at the same time, but I couldn't hear it over Pop snoring, so I didn't know if you guys heard it or not. Uh, not that I recall. So if we could put anything else in this call, what would it be? Oh. Uh. My problem is, is knowing that at best, even if I've got you entertained, I've only got you for an hour or two, which part do I feel is most important to include? Hmm. That sort of heads us down that best highway, doesn't it? Versus, uh, what's Oh yeah. Different? And I can, I can already feel that, that little mini war kind of boiling a little bit. Yep. <laughs> So I think, I think the biggest thing is, is that I'm, I'm trying to play with the I don't know zone a little bit to find a different way of putting it than I normally would. Nice. In the, so let's go with remembering that even if you split your skull open jumping off the roof because you were trying to nail a magic fly, it's still a win, even if it's not flying 
because the, both the consequences of gravity and the free fall in between where you almost got to experience flight are still the, ultimately the feelings you were feeling. So now you get to go back and, and revise what it was you really wanted and where you can recognize that feeling sooner before you find yourself having to split your head open to get that experience. Mm. For me, speed of noticing is so key with everything. Like how fast can you actually notice what's useful? How fast can you notice that the differences, the distinctions that matter? Cause, uh, I, I know to win just last week, the Scotch win. So I, I was yakking about, I think it was on the show. Like normally I like the Lafro egg and it's a hundred bucks a bottle here. And I found the bottle shop for some reason started getting in this, in this 10 year old whiskey. It's a single malt and it's remarkably like Lafro egg. And I really like it. So it's 60 bucks. I'll buy it. And I, and I told Dean the other day, like within the past week, if it ever drops down to 45, I'll buy it by the case. And I said, yeah, probably even at 50, whatever, you know, and sure enough, they, they've first, they only started carrying it. And second of all, they just put it on sale for 50 bucks. So I've bought $600 worth. Right. Uh, cause for me, that's like $1,200 worth of whiskey. So, I, so it's like, I, ju I just saved that money, but it's like, yeah, I could look at it like, well, I, yeah, like the 45 is what I, I mentioned 45. Yeah. I'm willing to do it at 50. But, but it's, but it's again, just fascinating to me because when I notice I had an imaginal act of buying it by the case. Now, the weird thing is uh, the cases that he ordered in for me haven't come in yet, but he had just enough in the store that I could get uh, in there six bottles in a case. He, he found just enough in the store that I got six bottles of each one. You know, there's two varieties to it and it's like, sweet, man. I mean, like I just, it, it, was it a win? Yeah, I didn't get the physical boxes of the case. I could pick on that, but damn, I just, I got what I wanted, you know? And, and for me, the thing is, what do I really want? I want fast wins that I can talk about all the time because it's if only I've ever had one win that I can talk about. It gets boring to me, but it's like, oh dude, like what other, it's, it's like getting that book uh, inspired by Max's share right before our call. It's like I get to mention that and share that with the world, you know? Oh, that's, that's an interesting uh, – I realized I had a turning point earlier in this week where it kind of fit. There's a book called Ishmael, and it's about yeah, yeah, a gorilla. Yeah. Yeah, right, and the, the sense of community isn't where the gorilla stops. It's the sense of community in the natural sense. But I discovered as I read it, I started to understand the sense of community as a truth more of, of as Neville refers to it, as the Elohim, as you brought up earlier, uh, that we're all doing this at the same time together. And if we play by the rules, we're going to constantly find new ways to lift each other up and make everything better and continue to improve. And as we fall into our states get so later, we fall into crap states we're going to find new ways to torment and destroy everything around us. <laughs> and I don't remember, I, I remember I was struggling with the concept of Elohim when someone handed me that book. And I just, I've read it twice now and I, I just couldn't, when I first picked it up, I'm like, okay, this is, you know, it's a couple hundred pages, two or three days, sit for 15, 20 minutes. I'll have it read. Right. right. And then I noticed six hours later, I have not only read it, but I've stopped and gone back through each page and just picked up little nuggets of, of stuff that yep. I would have written notes down for had I thought to grab a notebook. And so what should have been maybe a two hour read became a 12 hour read just because of all the little <laughs> bits I was going back over. Yes. God, that's a goodie book. The movie sucks. Stay away from the movie. I'm trying to figure out how... Hollywood would ever be able to capture the essence of, of spirit behind that book. Yeah. God, good luck. I'll leave it to a better mind for it. That's a good one for Joe or Grant to figure yeah. out. Totally, 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 totally. I so look forward to different things that they've put out because, uh, 
Yeah, that's the kind of thing, quality that I uh, that that I would enjoy, and so like, I might as well like, give it to them to do. That's another thing is is there's there's an important bit that really need kind of needs to be added to one of the calls, be it this one or not, is is that the only thing I'm really in charge of is changing the state to make sure what I want done gets done. That doesn't always mean I have to run around like a dog chasing my tail totally. to get it done. You're not going to make the movie. All you have to do is know that you enjoyed it. Right. Yeah. God, I love outsourcing. You know, so we imagined up two puppies and we didn't have to be in charge of them getting bread or their cellular division or feeding them as puppies. Like, fuck, man. <laughs> like, all the hard shit's outsourced. You know, I, I just get to take them to the dog park. Well, it's, it's funny you said puppies, but I'm actually looking at, and I don't know whether if it's a variation of pine tree or a cedar tree or what that's just outside the back porch here. And it's got the real rough, normal bark like you'd find on any other, especially evergreen tree. But about right. halfway up the trunk, it stops and it's smooth up to where the branches are. <laughs> nice. I could never in my life sculpted something and thought, oh, I don't have to make the bark go the same all the way up the tree. But here I am, I get to sit and wonder, you know, how cool is it that it's got normal bark up to where the pruning was and then all the new growth on the tree has smooth bark. How much of your life do you experience uh, what I would call the simple joy of amazement? That's why this is what's funny is, is even though I do tend to sort more by location than I realized before you pointed it out earlier, people want to talk about all these big major landmarks. I'm like, cool, but did you see the sunset over the mountains on your way there? Yep. Did you fly or did you drive? Because I guarantee if you drove, you'd have spent an extra hour going a longer way so you could appreciate all the little glow growth along the edge of the mesas. Yes. Have you read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? I have not. I have a bad habit of not reading things even sometimes that catch my eye. Maybe I should because I do really fit where you're like, I don't really, you, you really don't feel where I'm from. I don't really feel where I'm from either. So there's always somewhere else to go, something else to explore, something new to play with. Even if it's a stick in dirt, but I haven't sat in that dirt before. Yep. Victoria had uh, the oldest Maxwell boy, the bull, and uh, his brother come over and move dirt around. And Brucey go, Brucey has this thing for dirt. There's a hole in the back of the property that he just loves. He adores his hole. And, uh, yeah, because he'll just go in there and sniff. He's lovely to watch. Uh, and then he's lost interest in the hole in the past two to three weeks. And now this new dirt was moved. And God, I just look at him. He goes up there and he lays in it. And it's like, I've never laid in this dirt. They, they, they really get, in comparison, let me see how much time we got. Okay, we can. I got, we got seven minutes. So, in comparison, there's match. This this equals that. You're in Aries. All that explains everything. You're a fire sign, right? Uh, with match, match is useful because you want to know where to park the car or who you're going to sleep with tonight. You know, it's like, oh, that's my wife. I sleep with her, right? That's useful. Uh, you pay the bill at the bank. You know, it's useful. You don't give it to a stranger. That's match, but we really worship that in this culture, and it's a horrible way to abuse ourselves. Uh, there, there's another one at the extreme opposite side, and it's novelty. And novelty is noticing the uniqueness in the moment, and the uniqueness in the moment, and the uniqueness in the moment. And it's... It, 
if we make the trip of match, this equals that. All law of attraction is the same. To we go from scanning for same to scanning for differences, noticing, you know, that there's just something different about him or her today. Yeah, every time, uh, yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, it's that difference that makes the difference. But but novelty is really noticing. Yeah, fuck man, this call will never be the same. We can't duplicate Rob's call. And if we have another call someday, or you're in the garden, it again will be so unique compared to everything else. And it's like noticing novelty is something that gives to everyone. Uh, it's just it's how you honor the moment. It's how you actually honor yourself. It's how you honor seeming others. Uh, but it's that novel experience of uh, when I get off the call, Victoria, I'm sure, will ask me, yeah, how'd it go? Yeah, you know, uh, and I'll tell her something like I usually do. It was fantastic. We had a wonderful time. But it'll be unique. Even if it was the same words that I use every time, it'll still be a unique experience because the dance of you and me was a unique experience. And so will our next one and our next one and our next one. So uh, I love that you noticed that because a problem a lot of data sorters have is they're trying to get match. Uh, they just organize it all so it's all dead and controlled versus, you know, fuck man. If, you, if you're able to play in data and location and notice the beauty of the sunset within you and within her and within the puppy, you know, fuck man. It just gives, it just gives, it just gives. And that's that's the great thing about playing with this stuff is is I knew we nailed this call, but I could never in a million years imagine a better way to close it. Hmm. I I am so appreciative of the amount of stillness and silence that we both let show up in the call. I don't know if I can get it all in in four minutes, but I'm going to try here to <clears throat> go, go, go. <laughs> there was actually a, I was playing with the lessons uh, from the dream driven day and you were talking about the speech and, and picking out the rate of someone's speech being the rate they listen to. So yep. I, while I was in the tobacco shop buying a carton of cigarettes the other day, uh, there was this wonderful young man. I, I, Honestly, it, it one of those moments that honestly just felt like the two of us were the same person standing in two different places. And I did that with him, and he just completely flipped me. Mm. He was kind of agitated and wasn't having a good day at work to begin with, if, if I gather what he was telling me, right? So he, he – and he shifted, and he noticed the shift. He's like, I think I kind of like you, and asked for my name, and we shook hands and all that. And I go, I'll tell you the secret. You didn't have a choice. <laughs> I've been I've I've been playing this entire time with how best to communicate with you as far as the rate of speech we're both using and playing with drawing you back down to my normal speed and pulling myself back up to match your speed. Nice. And he, he just looked like his mind was ever loving blown and just I'm sure he still had a smile when he went home that night. I don't know, but the kind of play you describe is not the play of just getting rapport, which is horrible to me, but it's more like the play of getting rapport and inviting him to stretch and then inviting you to stretch because you invite him to your speed and then you invite you to his speed. And so you didn't fuck him. You made love to him. Wow. <laughs> Boom. Still here? Yeah, sorry. Uh, no props. I'm still, you know, the realization that I was doing exactly what you were describing instead of just figuring out the best way to try to play with that. Yes. It, it st still has me for a second here. Nice. We, we, we could make up a model. Uh, am I fucking them or making love with them? <laughs> that could be a great group call. Maybe we'll do that someday. <laughs> Listen to those two in the background. Chuckleheads. 
<sighs> it's been an honor and a pleasure, my friend. Yes, thank you. It was. Uh, I nailed. I knew I nailed this the first time, right after you opened the page up for us and had the announcement and all that. But I had forgotten again until you messaged me while I was at the boat the other day. Looking forward to our future adventures. Definitely. We, we play with, I'll play, keep playing with the four chemicals and, and work on that sorting the location thing. That seems definitely like a little piece of gold there to play with a little more. It's it's all it, in the Native American way. They call it the way of perceiving, and uh, jump back in the jumping mouse. It, it, there's nothing in there that linearly approaches this, but it really does help. Jumping mouse is such an adventure, and just noticing who am I in that book today? Who am I in that book in this moment? And uh, it can give you a lot of wiggle. I, I know how much you and yeah, it's good. Cool. Ah, what a view from the garden. I'm going to take a photo. So we're going to use a different photo for this one. Tube. And so I'm going to take thing next to the window looking out into the garden. So uh, I'll show you. You'll see. I'll see it when you post it. I, that's one of those things that I love fo good photos and, 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 and whatnot, but I've never learning to physically sit still as well as I mentally am still is still a I bit of it. a, still a bit of an adventure here. I got it. Have a lovely day, my friend. You too, partner. See ya. See ya.